25 years after unarmed Indigenous protesters were beaten, shot, and in the case of Dudley George, killed by police, the land they fought so hard to reclaim remains under military control. Littered with unexploded ordinances from its time as an army camp, Stony Point, as it's commonly known, won't be returned to its rightful owners until it's totally clean. And while the military has been making inroads at clearing the land, the destruction it's left behind goes far beyond contaminated water and unexploded bombs. They say that time heals all wounds. If you leave a wound festering, it just keeps getting worse and worse. You have to, like, post-traumatic stress has to be dealt with. Over the past two nights, we've told you about a victory of reclaimed Indigenous land and the agony that followed. The contaminated land, the inaction on building new housing, and the lingering trauma from the forced relocation during the Second World War. I think we're just starting to touch the surface on what traumas lie underneath. And when you start to sort of take the Band-Aid off and see what's underneath, it can, it can be pretty bad at, at times. And I think that right now, that's what we're seeing. The dislocation of their forced move, forced disconnect with their land, and resulting generational trauma left residents without the tools to manage their mental health. When they did move us out and when they kicked us out, we were a community of healing in traditional ways, but we lost all of that. When we moved out, we lost the connection to the land. There has been very little done in terms of counseling for those impacted by the events here. While residents don't always agree on the best way forward, they're adamant that proper housing is a key to healing and a way to reconnect. I would love to see um, all my community members get proper housing and um, I'd provide any therapy sessions for any of the community members in here because we haven't had any like uh, healing since um, the happening with Dudley. I uh, think it's important that we all you know, talk about our problems and not brush them away because it dulls you. Plans for transitional housing were floated before, particularly after the final settlement agreement was reached with the Crown in 2016. But a change in council left some of those plans in limbo. Now those plans are back at the forefront, moving out of the rundown former army barracks into temporary homes while more permanent housing can be organized. Many, though, are skeptical. Pierre George, Dudley's brother, says he won't believe it until he sees it. Not until I actually see one rule. I'm supposed to be the first on the list. We've been hearing for temporary housing for six years, so we don't jump for joy when we hear it. I think uh, our people actually deserve houses, not temporary houses, because uh, all the pain and torture, we are permanent people. We've lived here, we came back. Now, Chief Henry believes that transitional housing can begin to be built over the next several years, likely on land just like this. But to put it into perspective, once the land is totally handed over, it will have been nearly a century since the military took it over for temporary use and 50 years since Dudley George died trying to reclaim it. On Ajudanu territory, Christina Howarin, City News.